primarily today uh, about celebrating our past because we have a lot of past to celebrate and we're very proud of it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about who we are today and then very briefly about uh, what does the future hold for the prominence chapter. This is a lot of these archives I've uh, dug out of um, some of it out of the district history that that I've inherited at the, at the music mansion. I have uh, I'm down on my last oh, 80 or 90 boxes stuffed with things. So if anybody wants to come over and dig through them, maybe they can find some good things like this. This was actually sent to me by Antonio uh, that he got dug it out of International. This is a copy of the uh, original Charter Night. Um, and uh, my dad was one of the founders of the chapter. He was a member of New Bedford, along with uh, Charlie Ricketts and uh, several other guys that decided to let's start a chapter in Providence, along with, uh, I believe the total is 26 other chapters over a period of time that they started with their quartet, the Neptuners, which started in 1946 and toured everywhere uh, throughout New England, mostly, but uh, they also did USO tours and stuff like that. So this is the first document. The next document, I think, Mike, is uh, of the show, the first annual show we had. First, we have the actual photograph oh, from the right. Charter Night Banquet, which occurred February 26, 1949 at the Sheridan Biltmore in Providence, yeah. uh, a landmark hotel here in, in Providence. Now, what you can't see, unfortunately, because of the size of the way the picture is cropped, but right up to the top on the left, is my dad's shoulder. He's sitting at the table there next to the woman, right? Just at the head table, sitting down. He's just off the picture. But if you see the actual picture, he's got a big grin on his face. And I say, why are you smiling? And he said, well, you were born nine months later. <laughs> um, so so that was the Charter Night, uh, the Charter Night <laughs> show. Well, there's something I didn't need to know. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, 150 guys signed the charter that night. Okay, this is the first show. Well, this um, was the Charter Night Banquet program. Actually. Oh, that's the program from the Charter Night. Okay, you'll see a lot of the uh, old time quartets in there, the Four Smoothies, the Old Timers, the Jolly Whalers. The, the Capital Chords were actually what the Neptuners became for two years um, as, uh, as Charlie Ricketts, one of the um, big organizers, moved to Indiana briefly. And my dad sang in a quartet called the Capital of Chords. Um, and then um, as soon as Charlie came back, the Neptuners continued along their way. So big event. Joe Lopez was a local radio guy and he was very influential in getting a lot of the, the press coverage and so forth. And that's why there was such a huge turnout at the uh, Biltmore Hotel. Okay. Now here's the first uh, show. And uh, you can see that uh, the capital chords are on there along with the smoothies. The was, was chord scramble is the old timers in the Buffalo Bills when they were medalists. They hadn't won yet. Um, the uh, Buffalo Bills were on the program because uh, a month earlier they were doing a show with my dad uh, in New Bedford. And uh, that was the night I was born. And the Buffalo Bills came with my dad to the hospital to see me and uh, became my honorary godfathers. So that uh, was a little bit of that history. And as we move along, trying to... So now I'll get into the very long and distinguished quartetting uh, past of the, the Providence chapter. Nobleman was our first district champion. Um, and um, Rocco Ritchie was a longtime member of the, uh, of the chapter that uh, was probably passed away last of all of those. Bill Arnold moved to uh, Marietta, Georgia and was very active down there. Um, Murray Rigby was a, a great family friend and our insurance salesman. So, yeah, handled our insurance. <laughs> Big story about him is in those days, everybody smoked and drank. Everybody had a cigarette in one hand and a drink in the other hand, uh, even at chorus rehearsals. I remember that happening. and. Murray had a bad habit of uh, when he would come over for dinner, he would put out his cigarette in his in the dish that, uh, you know, after he was done with his dinner. And my mother used to complain all the time, Murray, don't do that. Murray, he kept doing it. So one day she served him uh, dinner in an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. 
Four Statesmen, um, obviously one of the, uh, the more famous quartets of the district. The uh, tenor Frank Lanza was singing with the Neptuners, left the Neptuners, and went to uh, the same with guys from three other states. Dick Chakras from Nashville, New Hampshire, Don Viner from Worcester, and Doc Sauce from uh, Meriden, which is now the Central Connecticut chapter. Um, it's got to be probably like the first long distance quartet. They were they were one of the first to be what was considered then a very long distance quartet. Yep. And you can see their license plates there. In Rhode Island, you see Frank holding up the SQSA. Um, my dad had Rhode Island's SPEB part of it. <laughs> There's their international picture when they won. Here's an interesting trivia thing. Uh, for those of you that are into this kind of thing. Alan, maybe you can help. I know you're, I saw you online. Um, they have red ribbons on. I know this is their championship picture. That's with the uh, ASCAP trophies, um, but they have red ribbons, which is confusing to me. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if that's the way we used to do it, made a change, but I don't remember them being red before. I'll have to do a little digging. Yeah. There was four years, there was four years of red ribbons and you can see that if you look at the wall of champions at International in Nashville, there's a, there's a wall and four of them have red ribbons. Oh, well, thank you, Antonio. You're welcome. Hi, Antonio. All right, as we move along, there's the Neptuners. And uh, what's interesting, the picture is shown is in this 67 championship version. Uh, but as you can see, there were lots of other versions as the years went through from 1946 all the way up to 1972. My dad was the only consistent one, but um, that was all the various combinations of the Neptuners, 1967 champions. They did a USO tour, uh, went to uh, Japan and uh, lots of other places, Hawaii. Uh, and uh, uh, they, were, they were very popular. I would call them entertaining, not necessarily. It took them many years to win the district. And they finally did it with their last combination. The drawings were done by my uncle, Walter Owen. I think it's impressive about little your father aged from 46 to 72. Almost he looks the same, same yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That was my uncle's drawing, of course. He just started wearing glasses in 63, though. Okay. <laughs> All right, 70, the four scores. You probably, if you were on last night, you heard plenty about them uh, with Jeff Hanks on tenor, Larry Tully on lead. And myself on bass and Gary Bowles is spelled wrong there. It's B-O-L-L-E-S uh, on baritone. Gary was a category specialist for many years, judge. Um, Larry Tully, of course, left after the four scores and went to become the baritone of the Boston Common. And Jeff passed away way too soon, uh, probably about 10 years ago. I'm going to guess now. It's been almost that long. Uh, 76 Court Conspiracy. Uh, Fran Page, Cal Sexton from New Jersey. Myself and Gary, uh, that picture was taken from Lodge Nightclub in New York, where we won a series of uh, uh, barbershop quartet contests that were not part of the society. They were held by Lowe's hotels hmm. around the country. Uh, Pilgrim's Pride, 78, Courtney Davis, Ted Doran, John McDonald on bass, uh, Mike Gabriella. Ted Doran, of course, was the main time dir championship director of the Providence chapter. Um, Courtney, Ted, and Mike Gabriel and myself went on to become uh, Grandstand Vocal Band shortly after this and uh, came in top 20 in 1980 and uh, actually still hold the record for the only quartet to beat an international champion in their quartet year in the prelims. We, we beat them in the prelims and they went on to win international. Did you beat who in the prelims? What's that? Who'd you beat in the prelims? The Boston Cubs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then classified lad, Steve Irish, great tenor, Ralph St. George uh, on lead, Jim Hickox from, uh, and, and Billy Mitchell were from, uh, Ralph, and with Ralph, all from Worcester. Uh, Steve was seen with Providence at the time, that's why they ended up being one of our quartets. Uh, a couple of years later, Ralph joined Mike Gabriella and myself and Franny Page, and we won with Prime Alliance. And then the management in uh, 1994, was it 90, 94? Yeah, 94. Um, and uh, Mike, we missed one on here. We missed 2001. 
Well, we haven't got there yet. We haven't got there yet. Oh, it will show up. Okay. All right. Let's see how this works now. Oh. <laughs> Color pictures. Yeah, except 2001 wasn't snapshot. Uh, I hadn't. I looked at this earlier, so it's my fault. I'm going to take the blame on this. 2001 was Roadshow. Uh, Antonio <laughs> wasn't even born then. Um, and then after Roadshow, which was uh, Roadshow was, um, of course, uh, myself on bass, Mike Gabriella, Bob Bob O'Connell, and what's that guy's name? Uh, Rick Spencer on tenor. Um, and then it went to uh, a Snapshot. Um, and you see the members there, Antonio and Alex were both, and Ed were all members of uh, Providence, Ed Foreman, and Joey was a member of uh, Lowell and Concord at the time. Uh, Antonio, that was, uh, what, 2012, 13, what year? 10, 2010. Yeah, 2010, okay. Sorry, Antonio. We'll get that corrected for our archive purposes. And then... Uh, the current Northeastern District Champions Daily Special, and uh, so so that's quite a history. A lot of uh, a lot of championships there. Isaac and Kai and Ben, who you all know, uh, sing with Concord and Worcester. And Chad is still a member of Providence as well, as director of that vocal group. Yeah, voices, you know. Okay, what's next? Anything? Oh, we, we did it. Oh, the senior champions. Well, you can see that for yourself. We had a lot of them. Uh, Norfolk County Com Music Company was our first novice champion. And then we've had many since then. Um, George Baggish Memorial Quartet was not actually a district senior champ because we didn't have one then. Um, but they were the first international senior champions. 1986, that was the first official contest. And that was Frank Lanza. Uh, from Providence that, that won that contest. And I did get snapshot right on this one. There you go. There you go. Um, 15 district championships uh, from 57 to 2010. And uh, the first year we won the contest international was in Los Angeles and everybody said, I'm not going to Los Angeles. <laughs> so that was the end of that. So 15 district championships, but only 14 uh, internationals are all listed there, along with the directors, which was Ev Wood originally, and then Ted Doran did many. Uh, Rick Lepore, one year. Kirk Young, three years. Gail Jemtik, one year. And Bob O'Connell, one year. This is the first championship picture, 57. My, my dad is on the, uh, on the right-hand side at the end of the front row. Uh, next to him is Johnny Bryden, who was part of the Neptunes uh, for many years. And then uh, Ed Wood is the center man in the row uh, as director. And if you look uh, one over to Ev's right, your left, and up one row, that's Frank Lanza from the four statesmen. Uh, and, and probably also notable in the back row on the left is Tommy Potenza. Uh, which a lot of people remember Tommy. Okay, then, then this is uh, all the championships from 81 to 96. Uh, went to lots of places uh, from Pittsburgh to uh, Los Angeles, to Montreal, to Salt Lake City, to Minneapolis, so a lot of places and a lot of great, great conventions. And uh, that I remember putting the ribbons in that frame and sticking this up on the wall. And I said to Ted Jordan, I said, I think that's it. I don't have any more space. Um, and then unfortunately we won two more times. So I gotta I gotta change my wall around. Tough problem. I know. Okay. Okay. Okay, can you go on mute, please? I don't know who that was, but <laughs> but uh, okay too. Uh, there you since we've heard from Antonio, you see him, believe it or not, right now almost in the center of this uh, picture at the top was a Rhode Island shirt. That's when we went international and Gail was directing and we did a mafia package. And uh, then the one below that was 2010 in Kansas City with uh, Bob directing our uh, KP package, <laughs> which we stole from Gas House Canyon. So who we are today, this is the most recent picture of the chapter. Uh, it's taken almost a year ago now. And, and a big part of our identity as a chapter is, is competing. We are 
uh, routinely compete in Patriot Division and are lucky enough to get to compete at the district on a regular basis. We definitely are big in performing. We average six full chapter shows per year. Uh, we like to we put on some amazing chapter um, annual shows. You see things like the Kingston Trio. Uh, we collaborate with Coastline Show Chorus on a, in, in a couple of last years with Voices United on a big holiday show at La Slot Shrine in Attleboro, which uh, will be the first time we've missed that in a while right, this year. Right. Over the years, we've had people like the Osmonds have been on our show, and uh, we've had Maureen McGovern. Uh, there you see the shot of the Kingston Trio. Uh, we've had numerous international champions. Up to the last couple of years, we used to have the international, at least one or two international champs on our show almost every year. Uh, we try to do a lot to help the community. Uh, every summer, we participate in a, a Black Island, either a cappella or quartet festival that raises money for the Mary D Fund. Uh, we've done uh, 50, charity shows for fire victims. Yeah, 56, I think, is the annual, is the number of annual shows. Uh, and I've been at all 56 of them. Um, and it's interesting that this year we didn't have it because of the pandemic. But Peter Greenman, who helps run the show, lives on the island, still sent out the uh, appeal letters to all of the ticket holders and was able to raise $10,000, even though we didn't have the show. Like, they paid us $10,000 not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mike and Mike, I'm just making sure that you're wrapping up in the yeah, yeah. pretty soon. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of fundraising. Uh, if you want to know anything about how we do our 2020 club fundraiser, that's the biggest thing that we do to raise money for the chapter. Uh, we're doing a silent auction this year that we normally do in person in December. Uh, please check out our website if you want to check out any of those. And uh, we do singing Valentine's every year. And we've also done casino bus trip. And we adapt. We are still being as active as we can during the pandemic. We have weekly Zoom rehearsals, which everybody is welcome to join. Uh, we're now adding a, a socially distanced VLQ at the mansion uh, so that the people on Zoom can actually hear all four parts working on virtual chorus projects and collaborating with people like the Newport Navy Choristers and Coastline Show Chorus. And we're looking forward to getting back to singing in person. We've got two brand new members that we wanted to highlight who've never had the opportunity to sing with us in the show. Uh, and we're very much focused on moving forward in the Everyone in Harmony vision. So thank you for your time. That'll do that. Awesome, that was a great launch to our chorus biographies. Thank you for putting that uh, wonderful presentation together and nice history. Can we have a, a, a Zoom hand for NBC? Yay! That was awesome. Okay, we're heading over to Troy, New York for the Uncle Sam Chorus. And Neil Kennedy is going to be talking. Hey, Neil, I, oh, you're unmuted. Great, good job. And I'm gonna pre be presenting um, the presentation. Well, the thing I wanna bring up too, and I just saw them, <clears throat> this is the, uh, picture when we were at Lake Placid and we won small chorus champion. Uh, Uncle Sam Chorus won small chorus champion numerous times uh, throughout the Barbershop Army Society. And that was, that was a, probably the most recent picture of us. And most of these guys are gone. Um, and the biggest chorus, the biggest, what happened here? Uh, I'm sharing the screen so that we can get into your presentation. Are you want to show more pictures? Just one. Okay. And this one here is when we were at our largest. This was was taken at the inauguration of George Pataki, who was governor of state of New York at the time, and we were invited special, very special, to present the national anthem. We were on the marble staircase in the um, executive land uh, legislative building at the time. Uh, this is when we're at our largest. Again, most of these guys are gone. Now, you can go ahead. This is the uniform we usually use for our parades and the hat goes with it. And the Uncle Sam Chorus was formed in 1991. I joined Saratoga chapter in January of uh, 1991 and also Uncle yeah. Sam Chorus the following week. So I've been in both choruses exactly the same time. The Uncle Sam Chorus, and I have to always bring this to the attention, is we are the only 
barbershop chorus in the entire barbershop harmony society that has the image of Uncle Sam, sings patriotic songs and performs in probably 20 parades throughout the Capital District, Massachusetts and Connecticut on a yearly basis. This is where we were here at the Joe Bruno Stadium in uh, Troy, New York. Um, uh, we always got invited because of our uniform and we sang the national anthem the way it's supposed to be done. And when we would go into the audience, people would always say, oh, thank you very much for, for, uh, for singing that so great, uh, it was so good to hear it done properly. And uh, so again, and this particular picture here is when we're in Pittsfield. We did the Pittsfield chap, we did the Pittsfield parade for about 18 years. Um, we were invited special for a special, oh, the, the, they had their Medal of Honor winners at particular time and they wanted us to come. And so we did that for the first time. This is our Uncle Sam here, Fred Polnish from uh, uh, <clears throat> Clifton Park who walks every parade. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so we were a very busy chorus. I'm the chorus manager. I run all the um, contracts and, and on the right here is, is some of our, our parades. Many parades we've done doubles um, where we would go to, let me see if I got one here. I don't see it, but we have one that we do Cohoes and, and oh yeah, right here, Green Island and Waterford. Uh, or Green Island and Cohoes, they don't have it listed here, but Green Island and Cohoes, we did Green Island at five o'clock in the afternoon and then drive to Cohoes and do the other parade for seven o'clock. We used to do many parades on Saturdays and Sundays. When I first took over, we did 35 parades in one year. Um, and it was just amazing. Uh, and the thing is, once you go to a parade, <clears throat> people see you from other venues, from other cities, and they'll come up to me and say, have you got a card? Have you got a brochure? Um, we had this brochure specially made just for us, uh, Uncle Sam chorus. Um, and let's see, and, and the, the biggest seller of course was at the Joe Bruno Stadium when they would uh, uh, see us and they would come to us. Now I have to, I was talking to Dan, we always did the Troy Flag Day Parade. That was the largest Flag Day Parade in the country. And we could always get people to come up and ask us for a card. And, uh, and I would hand them this brochure. And this one guy had come up and he asked me for it and I gave it to him. And that following year, we were called by the parade, um, California and Pasadena, California. They wanted us to come out and do the Roosevelt Parade. They thought we would be a great a, gr a great new venue that would never had a barbershop chorus in the parade. I says, you build us a float and fly us out there, we'll come. But of course we couldn't go, we couldn't go. But anyway, I'm very passionate about the Uncle Sam chorus. I'm a very patriotic gentleman who uh, loves this country and uh, we uh, go all over. Uh, this parade over here where you see these guys in green, two years ago, we went to the St. Patty's Day Parade in Boston. Uh, believe it or not, drove that float all the way from Boston Lake, New York, all the way to Boston. It was 10 degrees in the morning, and finally when we had it be online, but ready to go by 9, and the parade didn't start till 1. And when we finally got going, the parade was like 20, maybe 22 degrees. The best part, the sun was out and there was no wind. The first part of the parade was five miles long. And uh, this left on us, this was in Clifton Park. When we always did that every year, um, <clears throat> they did their Christmas parade. Um, we, uh, we went all over. And this particular portion here is at the uh, Oakwood Cemetery in Troy, New York. That's where Uncle Sam Wilson is buried. He's the only, he's the only um, gentleman uh, who has a flag over his grave site with a flag with a light on it 24 hours a day. And these are the guys who always came. We, we had these jackets special made. And again, many of these guys have gone to heaven. Um, but like I said, we were a 40 man chorus at one time and, uh, and now we're uh, down to about eight. Uh, and this particular picture over here is of Oakwood Cemetery this past month in which we did the ceremony there. This gentleman here was the mayor or the governor of um, Pittsfield, a nice guy. And uh, 
But anyway, um, um, just want to let you know that we're always looking for new guys. But as they always say, I can't sing. You don't want to hear me sing. Uh, my wife tells me not to sing. So that means, means we don't grow. But uh, I now have the Patriot Flight veterans who bring the um, veterans down to uh, Washington to their various monuments and uh, ceremonies. <clears throat> and these guys really love our parades. And so they have joined us on the float and, uh, and they wear their uniforms and, uh, and people just love it. Uh, again, when we um, do our recordings, we went to a, we had a gentleman by the name of Ed Delahanty. His son <clears throat> owns a uh, recording studio and we went to his studio and we made our recordings put it on a flash drive and we do that through our uh, amplifier and we sing God bless America, Battle Hymn of the Republic, Yankee Doodle Dandy, Grand Old Flag, This is My Country, My Country Tis of Thee. And we do the four, five branches of the service. <clears throat> and when we do the five branches of the service, people just eat it up. They just think it's wonderful that we sing those songs to the gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see, this was in 19, Nine, you know, uh, 2005, we did a parade in Saratoga and they had the Medal of Honor winner convention in Saratoga. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to see a picture of the Medal of Honor and it's a different picture to see a guy wearing it. Um, and there were probably 90 guys from all over the United States that came to Saratoga. And uh, so we got down by in front of the grandstand, we sang, God bless America in front of these guys. And these guys were crying. I'm going, geez, I, I, we sound that bad? And they were really taken by it that they didn't realize that a chorus like this existed. <clears throat> uh, uh, and so we got to, I got, I bought the book. They had a book of all the Medal of Honor winners in the, in, in the entire world. And I got some autographs from some of these guys. And, uh, but it was really a wonderful, wonderful venue. We, we like I said, I had to turn parades down. We couldn't do them all, uh, but we always. Uh, Neil. Yep. Can Can we just stop to ask any, if there's any questions out there? Why are we Are we getting close to my time? Yeah, two minutes, and I just wanted to see if there's any questions for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I want to say one thing. If you gentlemen want to have venues and you want to make money doing parades or doing jobs, the best way to do it is call the Chamber of Commerce in your area and ask them for the calendar of events. And they will send you a calendar of events and then you just start picking them. But when you do a, when you do a gig, parade or sing out someplace, don't sell yourself cheap. Because if you sell yourself cheap, in other words, oh, we'll do it for a hundred bucks. Oh, they probably not that good. But you, you always ask for a good sized dollar and you will get the, you will get the money. Uh, when we first started out with the with the chorus, we got two hundred dollars a parade. We thought that was fantastic. Now we make five to six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a parade, <clears throat> and they pay it, and they pay it. So, if any questions, feel free feel free to ask me any question about our chorus or if any, anything I said that you would like to talk about. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. But. I was just going to say that I had no idea that uh, that you were making uh, a fee for the parades. That's a great oh. fee for a lot of chapters. Oh. oh, a lot of chapters would tell me, oh, they won't pay you. Yes, they will. Okay. Yes. Uh, Neil, tell them the story about uh, Brattleboro. Oh, yes. Now, I got to tell you, this ha really happened to me. Most, most of the time, Brattleboro, I've been there three or four times. And this one time they called me and they said, uh, Neil, uh, <clears throat> we're having a, our bicentennial and we're uh, having four Medal of Honor winners and they're going to be at the parade. And what would you charge me to come to do our parade? I said, uh, how's 800? Okay. And that was a month away. And so a week later, the guy called me. He was the guy, he had his marching orders from the hierarchy and said, okay, we really want you to come, Neil. So now we want to pay 1500 to come. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's ridiculous. I said, you don't have to charge us. That. I said, 800 is more than that we need. We, I, Neil, I, I've got my marching orders. I've been told to call you, tell you what we want. So they said, we're going to give you 1500 I said, okay. 
So I went back to rehearsal and told the guys, hey, we're getting 1500 for this deal. We thought that, oh man, that was fantastic. A week before the parade, this guy called me again. And I said, how you doing? Is it good? He says, now, you know, Neil, we, I know he's had 1500, but you know, we, we just, so we want you to come so bad. And I said, okay, don't worry about it. If I say I'm coming, we're coming. I said, we won't miss it. He said, but now we want to pay you 2,500 to come. <laughs> <clears throat> and I said, you got to be kidding me. He said, nope, 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 2,500. So Hank DiMartino was my president of Uncle Sam Chorus. He says, I want you to take that float over the day before, get your secured hotel, and <clears throat> you'd be ready in the morning. And so I did. We went over the day before, my wife and the driver, and uh, got in a uh, secure hotel with parking lot so they could watch the float. <clears throat> and, um, and the thing that was interesting, take about 200 yards to your right, and that was where the beginning of the parade was, so we didn't have far to travel. And the other thing is, the Uncle Sam Chorus is made up of members from other choruses, Saratoga, Pittsfield, Schenectady chapters came and be part of our chorus. That's how we built. When they heard, them, heard about us, man, they thought it was really wonderful. All because, right. Again, it's the only chorus in the entire society with the image of Uncle Sam. There's nobody else. Imagine that being the only one in the United States of America. That's unbelievable. I got to tell one, one, one last one. Last one, uh, last one, last one. <laughs> one last one. I'm, I'm, I'm really passionate about this. But we wanted to do the Macy's Day Parade, Thanksgiving Day Parade. And I got it all set. Joe Bruno was the uh, senator from in Albany. He sent us all kinds of recommendations to go, and all the trophies we won, and all the things and everything. And I said, and I called. This is this is terrible. This is terrible. What you're going to hear? They said to me, Neil, can you tell me what songs are in your repertoire? And I told them. And they said, I said, God bless America, Battle Hymn Republic, Yankee Doodle Dandy, Grand Old Bag, This is my country and the five branches of the service. They said, <clears throat> oh, well, you have to take God Bless America and Battle Hymn of the Republic out of your repertoire. And I said, why? We can't offend the Muslims or the atheists. Uh, in okay. <laughs> and I said, you know what you can do with your parade? Uh, because I'll tell you, <laughs> we had the entire Barbershop Harmony Society was going to build us another float uh, and where we're going to go. The whole society was involved and said, let's do it. So, but we didn't go. But anyway, okay. that's my hey, story. Uh, if you want to ask any questions. Oh, and again, uh, we, we got to give the applause for you, Neil. You did a nice job presenting. Good. We have to move on to another chorus, I, though. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Yes, you and, are so uh, passionate. Hopefully, and hopefully we'll have parades next year. I don't know. If we don't, we may have to fold. Right. That's right. right. Awesome. All right. We're heading into the North Country Chordsman. Uh, which is my home chorus. And I also brought a few of my friends along, our president, Bruce Pactus here, our secretary, um, Barry Walker is here. Also our audio manager, Bill Stearns is here. And then there's and some other friends I haven't looked looked all through, but uh, thanks for being here. And please chime in if, if I have missed anything. Okay. So we're the North Country Chordsman. We're up in Hanover, New Hampshire. And there's our, our symbol, which is cutting cords of wood. We dress up nicely, but we also enjoy summertime when we can wear our short sleeve blue shirts. This is in my hometown at the top, um, singing at the 4th of July. And then this is uh, our annual show in the Lebanon Opera House. Bruce, do you want to take this one? Okay, I'll do it. Okay, now I'm unmuted. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I lost my picture in the gallery view. So we've been around since 1977 and we've uh, had never became a big chorus when I joined Oh, about 12 years ago, we had about 40 guys uh, and we had regularly 35 or so on the risers. And over time, uh, we've changed, but we, uh, 
we really embraced the everyone in harmony efforts uh, that came out a few years ago and have been uh, trying to move forward with that. Uh, we, we really want people to have fun and enjoy themselves while we're singing. We focus on fellowship. We do have, uh, we've had some uh, quartets, at least uh, one or more members of whom have been part of the North Country Chordsman. Dan uh, was district champs with Fast Track, uh, singing bass with them. Uh, and we have uh, the Top Drawer Four was one of our most storied uh, quartets. Uh, they were organized for years. Uh, I sang with the Clefhangers. You can see Ron Higgins all the way on your left in Top Drawer Four. And in the picture right below it, uh, with the cliffhangers and Ron is uh, second from right singing tenor. So he was a member for many, many years. Over to the right of the cliffhangers, you see one mode of expression. Uh, those guys have been around uh, for singing together for about 15 years. And then of course there's Fast Track in your upper right. Uh, we're district champs and work in progress. Another one of our chapter quartets that uh, still exists. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Oops. I wanted to tell you a little bit about our one of our founding members who have, has really um, made an impact on our group and his name is Elmer Brown and he uh, passed away just last year and uh, he was just a North Country Chordsman through and through. Uh, one of the founding members, as I said, he had so many members of note. He was a landscaper and he had his own nursery, but every time he would go to landscape somebody's house, he his first question when he got there was probably after the talking about plants was, do you like to sing? And he had cards from the North Country Chordsman and he got so many guys to come and ch check out our group. Uh, I think just he had 22 men of note. It's just amazing. And he was also an EMT, a ski coach, a Marine. Uh, he did solo singing and his, his uh, wife Bertha was uh, the minister. And uh, he, he, told, he told one, one story that I really liked, which was, um, he was singing in a Vermont church and the lights went, the electric went out because of a, a, a windstorm. And he kept singing, even though nobody could see him. They just kept going and somebody lit a candle and, and he continued his solo. So that was, that was Elmer, he didn't stop. As you can see, here he is wearing his Marines uniform. And we have a little bit of a video of him singing a tag uh, when we had a, a local TV station come to do a feature on us. Gotta share your audio, Dan. All right, I'll, I'll do it a different way. Thanks. I I remembered that as I was looking at it. There we go. When it's Just marvelous. Elmer was still coming to rehearsals when he turned 89 and 90 years old, sang almost up until the day he died. What are we known for? We are known for a whole bunch of things, but one of the things that uh, Bruce has been really involved with is our yearbook. It's very professional looking. We hand it out all year at every one of our gigs. So it's like a glossy front and lots of stories about barbershop and the judging system and about us and the gigs we do and our quartets and we sell advertisements in there and that's our main money maker. It typically generates $11,000 for us. But now that we've heard about parades, maybe that's even more fun. <laughs> we definitely love to support Youth Harmony when one of the, the top choruses to send uh, students to Harmony Explosion every year and we've ramped that up and we have a lot of contacts at high schools. I teach at a high school, not I teach science but not uh, music but I still have made a little club at my high school. And uh, Dan Signer was at Lebanon High School and he made a lot of inroads there. We have an awesome singing Valentine's program. So there's a work in progress singing to some happy person. Just and, a, word, a word about that. We regularly do between 75 and 90 singing Valentine's and that's 
in a population in a 30 mile radius of about 40,000 people. So pretty popular. Yeah, we're very busy. We're going from eight in the morning till seven at night. The, the folks still talk about the trip they took to Ireland. I wasn't on that trip because it was in the 80s, but uh, they got, to, I think the Gas House Gang was also with them on the tour. I think that's who it was. Um, and that was very memorable, especially Elmer would talk about that. We like to welcome new singers and we want to make sure that they feel comfortable. And um, we have a buddy on the risers and we're hopefully going to have a few new singers when we have rehearsal this next Tuesday. We have an annual show in the Lebanon Opera House, which is a really nice uh, big building. It's professional and they're able to give us like projected pictures behind us as well as awesome sound and lighting and giving us a little recording of our performance too. So we're thankful for the Lebanon Opera House. We also were the sort of the, of the breeding ground of Age to Perfection, which was 2019 Harmony Inc. Queens, uh, Dan Signer's wife, Gayla Case, and some other people who grew up around Dan Signer's other chorus called Harmony Night, which Bill Stearns is a part of. Uh, we supported them and they are awesome and if check check them out age to perfection they'd be great on your show we love to sing on the dartmouth green every fourth of july and one year it was uh just after 9 11 the, the yeah the end of that year and we were singing and we got to the last chord of our of our um america the Amer american overlay America, 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 the last chord and fighter jets, three of them flew right over top of the green. It was, it just couldn't be a, to have, have been timed more perfect. And uh, everyone was amazed in the crowd. And, and I was, I was flabbergasted. And that's like a, a memory that still gives me chills. And then there's a picture of us singing in the cold, but we like to do that in Hanover uh, as part of their, their um, holiday open shops are, are late at night and they have uh, Santa Claus for the kids and they've got a horse horse carriage that pulls around people. Uh, there, there's us at the end of a contest and I've got a little bit of, can you feel the love tonight here to see While us. we're queuing that up, I do want to mention that uh, over the past year, we uh, started an experimental mixed uh, gender. That, that's oh, next, Bruce. Next, next, Bruce. That's coming in? Good, yeah. okay. Oh, and can you feel the love? So that's a little taste of, of who we are. So as Bruce mentioned, um, last year we voted to allow singers of all genders to belong to the Hanover chapter. We maintained the bass clef chorus, but welcomed a new high level contemporary acapella mix group called the Vox Stars. And Marianne and um, Lisa are on the call too. And Bill Stearns are part of the, and Bruce are part of the Vox Stars too. After having uh, just two information sessions, the group grew from eight members to 12 in just a year, and uh, we're continuing to grow. We've sung with the annual, on the annual show with NCC and a couple of gigs, and we're adding some more material. We also um, started to do more visual planning so that we have like choreo and uh, try to make the song more entertaining. And we try to sing without a director too. There's a look at us around the holiday time. And here are some of the songs that, that we've chosen. Uh, Chad and Alyssa are going to be presenting about Voices United and how they choose mixed songs. So if you're interested in, in that, please check out Chad's presentation. Uh, so we're doing Africa and so it goes. Siahamba, which is a South African spiritual. So notice we're not choosing just from the BHS catalog. We're trying to branch out a little bit more, all kinds of contemporary acapella. And Bill Stearns is going to be presenting this at another workshop, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser here that uh, our newest endeavor is to sing using these wireless microphones and headsets that get an FM station. So here's Bill's car loaded up with the receivers and there's a mixer, mixer in here and a transmitter and here's an antenna. So it's sending that signal back to us so that we can hear each other in real time. And we've been rehearsing outside social distancing with masks 
and it gets it's getting dark <laughs> so and cold <laughs> and cold and there is lots of mosquitoes around here but uh we persevered because we love to sing so i appreciate you uh tuning in today to hear about to the hanover chapter made up of now two choruses are there any questions i got a question dan uh vox what does that stand for and so vox is latin for voice so it's nothing local, it's just what the Latin word. Well, actually, Dartmouth College is in Hanover, New Hampshire, and their motto is Vox in Clementis. Vox Clementis in Deserto, yes. Yeah, Bruce is an alumnus. Uh, so a voice crying out in the desert. Bruce, did you know the two of Grandma's boys are alumni of, of that? I did not. Yeah. What, do you know what class? Uh, would have been 80, uh, no, I'm sorry, 70, uh, 72 probably. Oh, pretty close. I was on campus till 67. Okay, I want to get over to the last presenter for this morning, just because then I'll have to start another Zoom meeting at around two o'clock. Oh, we have another alumnus on, John Woodhouse, graduated in 73 from Dartmouth. Um, Russell, are you, th are you there, Russell? Yes, I am. Okay. Can you hear Russell, me all right? Sure. Okay, cool. Russell is from Halifax, and uh, their name is the Harmonizers, and he's going, he's, go, he's not going to show his screen, but that's, um, uh, he, he maybe wants to talk about that, but uh, I am so appreciative that Russell can, can still make today and talk about what's going on in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Thank you, Dan. Um, I actually could share my screen if I'm allowed to do that. Yes, you are. Uh, I, I don't want to put my camera on because uh, I've had uh, two retinal detachments in the last two months on my left eye. And uh, right now I am lying down on my right hand side because that's what the doctor tells me I have to do for another few days. So um, you really don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you I can share to my share screen. Uh, you I think this is the one I want to share. Can you see that picture all right? Yeah. Are you seeing the slideshow or just the... Uh... If you hit present. Yeah, I thought I did, so, but uh, maybe I'm sharing the wrong screen. Just a second, I'm gonna stop that because I was presenting, but I share. I think I shared the wrong screen. That's all, I shared my, uh, my screen instead of the presenting one. Let me do that again. Okay, share screen. Uh, is that the one? Can you see that? It's the same as before, but uh, is it? We, well, then we'll just stick with that because yeah, it's working. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know why. Uh, oh, that's working. That's it. Is that it? Okay, there we go. That was just in my way. All right. I have no idea what that 455 is here, <laughs> but uh, this is the original picture of the. It was the Halifax Atlantic Swells back in, uh, I think it was 1965 that they started, or 66. Um, there, do you, can you see my mouse moving or not? Probably not. Um, there's one yeah, fellow. we can. We can. Okay, this fellow right here, this is Don Duncan. No, Don Duncan. This is Doug McLean. Don's over here. Doug McLean is still singing with us uh, all these years later. And... Uh, of course, several of these people have uh, joined the chorus eternal, as they say. But uh, uh, Don Doug is still still with us and still very active in the. Matter of fact, he's our treasurer right now, so he's you know one of the really important guys in the chorus. Uh, this is a much more recent picture. Uh, that's my co-director, uh, Paul Creaser, standing at the mic taking a bow after uh, one of our shows. I'm way over on the in the first row on the far right because I had probably directed the song right before it. So I just moved over there as Paul came out. Uh, Paul and I have been co-directors. Uh, the chorus is now called The Harmonizers, as Dan said, uh, uh, five years ago, six years ago, somewhere around there, five, I think. Uh, there were two choruses that decided to merge. The, the, we had three choruses in our area. 
Uh, Dartmouth City of Lakes Chorus is still going strong. We had the Millstream Chorus in the Bedford Sackville area. And in Halifax, we had the Atlantic Swells. Now, all three of those communities are very close together. You could drive from the place that the Swells rehearsed to the place that Millstream rehearsed to the place that City of Lakes rehearsed in about 20 minutes. I mean, you could just drive around the harbor and you'd hit every th all three of them. But um, the Swells and Millstream were getting very small. We were down to, you know, about 16 active members in each chorus or so. And it was getting to the point that we're saying, you know, like if, if two tenors get sick, we're not performing anywhere. So we talked for a while and decided it was worth trying uh, an experiment to merge the two choruses together. And so we, we spent a year together without officially merging and it went fairly well. Paul and I shared director's duties and uh, we were happy together. We liked it. So we decided to make it official. And uh, then we decided we needed a new name. So we became the Halifax Harmonizers and uh, it's, it's gone well. We've had some fun. Um, but I mentioned there were three choruses at one time. This, I happened to be the guy finishing directing that song, but this was all three choruses for our 75th anniversary, the Society 75th. We got all three choruses on stage together, um, put on a really fine show that night. It's one of the best shows any, any of our choruses ever did, I think, just because, I mean, for one thing, we had that many voices on stage, which like never happens around here, but uh, it was a really good night and uh, the, the audience enjoyed it a lot. So that was, uh, that one was a lot of fun. But merging two choruses together um, takes a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of time. It wasn't something we did overnight. Um, as far as I know, we did not lose anybody because of the merge. Uh, both choruses had a number of people sort of on the, on the cusp. You know, there's always somebody thinking about leaving and somebody, not as active as they used to be uh, for you know a variety of reasons and of course some people move away and things like that so that all happened about that time but i don't everybody we did have a 100 percent vote to merge from both choruses and i really don't think anybody stopped because of the merge um, which was surprising we expected you know just likely we would lose a couple but we did not so we were very lucky that way and uh, Paul and I very recently decided to try something. A few years ago, we were together at Harmony University and I've been going to Harmony U for the past, um, I think it's 16 in a row that I've been to, including this year's virtual. Um, Dan and I were uh, sweet mates last year. Uh, my dad and I shared a room and Dan was on the other side of, a, of the shared washroom from us, but um, Paul and I attended a session put on by Steve Scott and Jay Doherty at Harmony U, where they talked about a, a interesting way for two people to co-direct a chorus, where one would be the guy that waves his arms and does the usual directing stuff. And the other one is more of a vocal director. So they ran a class where they did this and Jay was directing and then, you know, he'd, he'd go for a bit and stop. And then if Steve had anything to say, he had carte blanche to step up and say, okay, I've got something. And he'd correct something over here or you know, correct something with the baritones or with the tenors or tell the leads uh, about a vowel shape they need to do better or, or anything in the balance, you know, more bass on this line. He, he could say whatever he needed to say and Jay would give him the floor. And as soon as that was done, Jay would take over and start directing again. So Paul and I agreed to start doing this. Um, we agreed to start doing this in March of this year. So if you stop and think about that, you will realize we haven't had much chance to do it yet <laughs> because uh, I think the, the rehearsal that we initiated it was the, it was, it was the last rehearsal before the shutdown. Um, so we are starting to look at getting back together again. Um, we're very lucky here in that Nova Scotia has three active cases uh, of COVID and all three of them were people who had been traveling and came home and were self-isolating for two weeks and came down with symptoms. So we've got no spread of COVID at all in Nova Scotia right now. 
Um, so we are allowed to start getting back together and doing some things. So two, two Mondays ago? Yes, because last Monday was uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, so we shut down for that. But the Monday before that, uh, we actually got together at our old rehearsal spot. We were inside. Um, not everybody's comfortable coming back yet, of course. Uh, I think we had about 14 guys out uh, of our usual 23 or so. But um, it was just so nice to be able to stand in a room together and sing some chords and make it happen. And uh, I mean, everybody was rusty. Um, and we actually acknowledged a couple of our members um, had passed away in the last year uh, since we'd last been together, not from COVID, but from other factors, uh, mostly age. So um, we said, well, let's, you know, let's sing I Believe. We, we've sung I Believe forever. So I said, let's sing I Believe just to, and, and think about our, our uh, brothers in harmony who've left us. And we started singing with I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. Ah. And everybody stopped. Nobody could remember the next line. I said, guys, <laughs> really? Like, you know, so I reminded them the next line. That was all it took. It took. We sang the song and, uh, you know, raised a metaphorical glass to our, uh, our lost brothers. And uh, it was actually a very nice moment. But it was just interesting that, you know, this song that some of these guys have been singing for 50 years, the lyrics just completely left their heads because um, it's been so long since we've been together. But we have been doing Zoom meetings uh, and a couple of things we've been doing on Zoom. I will start with a warm up and the warm ups I've been using come from the Harmony University vocal warm ups on the YouTube channel. Um, so we've had warm ups from uh, Steve Scott and Deborah Lynn and uh, Don Campbell and all these other uh, great instructors uh, from Harmony University. And at one point during the rehearsal, we'll always watch an international champ, um, either a chorus or a quartet or both. And uh, we have fun with that too. So I wanted to show you some of the quartets that we've had throughout the years. Oh, sorry, this is a, one of our uh, big things that we do is Christmas performances. We get into a, usually about 12 seniors homes every year and we put on an hour's show. Uh, we don't have quite an hour of Christmas music, but we do have uh, about 45 minutes and then we pad it with some other stuff. But this was at one home and um, this gentleman in the in the sweater here, um, it, the fellow beside him was a member of the Atlantic Swells for many years and, and because of his health had to stop. But this fellow here, uh, when this picture was taken, which I think was last, it was two Christmases ago, he was 103 years old and had sung barbershop somewhere else earlier uh, in his life. And so uh, we invited him to sit sit with us for this picture. And uh, it was it was neat. Um, 103 years old, that blew us away. Uh, this is one of our earliest quartets uh, back in 1966. They were called Three Potato Four. Uh, and this gentleman in front uh, with the check shirt was the Lee, that's Tom Potty. He was a charter member of the chorus. He passed away this year, um, I think it was April that he passed away. Uh, one of the quartets he sang with uh, more recently used to do the song, I want to do it again. I'd love to do it again. You know, I love life, I'd like to do it again. And uh, that Tom had the lead on that one. That was his song. And the, you know, uh, so when I learned of his passing, I, I brought up Nightlife's version of that one with Lou Perry singing the lead and just uh, <laughs> listened to that for a bit, shed a few tears for Tom and uh, it was nice. Uh, this is another <laughs> another quartet, uh, and two of these guys are still in our chorus. Doug McLean and uh, and Les, Les Ingram uh, are still in our chorus, and uh, it's uh, it's great to have that. Current quartets. This is 